the conference finals was thought provoking. It truly was. It had me thinking, is Jalen Brown the best player on the Boston Celtics? Or is Jason Tatum the best player on the Boston Celtics? I just saw Jalen Brown win the conference finals MVP. And did we bestow the title of MJ or the face of the league on Anthony Edwards too early? Did Derek Lively just outplay the four-time Defensive Player of the Year, Rudy Gobert? Did Kyrie and Luka just terrorize the number one defense in the league? The conference finals was mind-boggling. Welcome to The Daily Thinker, where we discuss theology and basketball from a unbiased perspective. The conference finals, as I said at the beginning, was mind boggling. It was. Let's start off with Indiana versus the Boston Celtics. Now, I must say, when it comes to the Easter Conference, this playoff run, it has been boring. It has been boring. We saw the Bucks. They were compromised. No Giannis. He's hurt. Dame gets hurt. Tyrese beats them. Then we see Tyrese face the Knicks. Jalen Brunson hurt. Hart gets hurt. OG and Anobi hurt you beat them in seven games even though that was a interesting round only rounds that were interesting in the Easter conference finals this year was the knicks if the knicks were playing i was all in i was dialed in that was the best some of the best games to watch interesting chippy feisty they get after it they get in each other's face of course nobody will fight <laughs> that makes me think of jalen brown when he was confronted by Miles Turner and he went to the podium and said Miles Turner is a good kid and Jalen Brown is older than Miles Turner I'm like what what is going on here but that's beside the point the Eastern Conference Finals has been boring and everybody had the Boston Celtics beating the Pacers in five or four games and they did that with a sweep and this series was won in game one Jalen Brown you are your team is down three and you hit this clutch shot in the corner right now Indiana if you're down three you have to foul you have to foul you have to foul you have to foul if you're down three you have to foul I know it can be tricky because if you Try to foul and they get in a shooting motion. That's automatic three free throws versus somebody hitting a tough shot. And this shot that Jalen Brown hit was just a tough shot to hit. And he hit it. You have to live with it. And that just took all the air out the balloon. And it was over with for the Indiana Pacers. And Drew Holiday, who was big in this series, too. We saw him lock down Nimhard, get the turnover. We saw him lock down Tyrese Hellenburton in the first quarter, get the turnover. So, this Boston Celtics team is a good team, but the games in the series, the Boston Celtics haven't been involved in this season, this postseason at least has been boring. It hasn't been exciting, hasn't been breathtaking or just dazzling, anything like that. Just far from that, just we beat them. Let's move on to the next matchup. <laughs> because they face compromised teams too. Miami Heat, no Jimmy Butler. Even though if Jimmy Butler plays, I think the Boston Celtics still win that series in five or six donovan mitchell he gets hurt he doesn't play the full series no jared allen you beat them in five games in indiana tyrese hallenburton gets hurt and even if tyrese was healthy fully healthy played all four games i think boston wins in five instead of four so they had a cakewalk i was i withhold saying that this season in this postseason <laughs> that the Celtics had a cakewalk. I'm like, okay, they're NBA players. They're facing who was in front of them. You cannot change who were, who's in front of you. Like who, what team is in front of me? I face that team. And I will grant the Boston Celtics this. KP is hurt as well. So no KP. So KP is compromised. He's injured. He's working his way back. And maybe he can come along and help this team win a finals win a championship this year but the Boston Celtics just boring just not that fun to watch and Jalen Brown winning the Easter Conference Finals MVP over Jason Tatum came down to moments even though Jason Tatum averaged 30 10 and 6 and I'm seeing guys say that Jason Tatum isn't a top 5 guy in the NBA Jason Tatum isn't is he isn't that we don't speak about Jason Tatum the way we speak about Luka or Anthony Edwards maybe his game is not as you know, entertaining 
As to Anthony Edwards, of course, electrifying dunks. Luca with the step back, nice moves, getting to the um, mid range. He can even post up at times, and just his playmaking ability is very eye popping. It makes you like, mm, that's that's nice to watch. Versus Jason Tatum, he gets his buckets and moments. Okay, he, he has to step back here in mid-range there. But that behind-the-back pass to Al Horford in the clutch, that was something I'd like to see more from Jason Tatum. Add a little bit more flair to your game. Maybe it's that. I don't know. But Jason Tatum is a top-five player, and this is a player that should be respected but doesn't get the respect because he has so much success in the past. That is the hurdle right there getting over the success that you had in the past now everybody expects you to win an nba championship and if you don't win an nba championship we don't care what you do or what you did and that's what jason tatum is facing right now and that's why he really didn't get any votes for league mvp this season and people argue now is jalen brown the go-to guy on this boston Celtics team no he won because of moments that corner three in game one and that 40 point game i think in game three he won that eastern conference finals mvp because of those elements in that series let's move on to a more exciting series the timberwolves versus the mavericks and before i start with them just enjoy two minutes and 30 seconds of kyrie irvin and luka Doncic cooking i mean just cooking the best defensive team in the league enjoy I don't have to go into detail. I don't have to point out what Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic did to that Timberwolves team in the Western Conference Finals. We all saw it. We all witnessed it. Nobody was able to slow down Kyrie or Luka. They got to any spot that they wanted. Luka posted up more. Luka got to the paint when he needed to. He got to the mid range when he needed to. He got to that three-point shot when he needed to. And he did it over a second-team all-defensive player in Jaden McDaniels, somebody who had Jamal Murray rattled. One of the best playoff performers in the past, what, five to seven years? He had him rattled. And Luka stayed composed 
hit amazing shots over Jaden McDaniels. Kyrie Irving stayed composed, hit clutch shots when you needed him. Sometimes he doesn't start off well in the first half, but he will finish that game when you need him to finish that game. And going into this series, I said, Kyrie Irving, you cannot average 15 points, 16 points like you did against a young Thunder team and be able to get past this Minnesota team. And he did that by averaging 27 points per game. We saw Luka with 32 points per game and just almost averaging a triple-double, just unstoppable. Like, what more do I need to go into detail about that? You watched enough of it. If you didn't watch it, go back and watch it again. I mean, go and watch it. And if you did watch it, go back and watch it again and enjoy it again, okay? The Timberwolves. The Timberwolves, I had these guys winning just because they beat Joker in the Nuggets in seven games, down 18 in game seven. You come back on their home court in Ball Arena and you win that. No, 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 no. Let me stop. Let me stop. OK, because I have to pay my respects to Derek Lively and Gafford. Lively and Gafford were unstoppable on the defensive end, were unstoppable on the offensive end. Derek Lively went. I can't believe I'm about to say this, man. Derek Lively shot 100% from the field in the worst of conference finals. And I guess his primary defender is the defensive player of the year. The four time defensive player of the year. You can't make this up, man. You cannot. <laughs> I repeat, you cannot make this up. Derek Lively was a better defender than the four-time defensive player of the year. He protected the paint better than Gobert did. Gafford protected the paint better than Gobert did. They're just better playmakers than Gobert. I'm not trying to knock Gobert as not being a great player, not being a good defensive player. He's 100 times better than me. Of course, we, we all know that. I'm behind the camera talking the basketball, the NBA basketball. He actually lives NBA basketball and participates in the game. Of course, we are not on the same level when it comes to the game of basketball. But talking about defense and comparing him to Lively and Gafford, they did much better than he did this series. They were the superior players. Rudy Gobert wasn't better than Gafford or Lively this series. I hate to say it. And this is coming from a defensive. This guy's a defensive player of the year, four-time defensive player of the year, wasn't better than Lively or Gafford on the defensive end. Hmm. Interesting, right? Very interesting. Gafford, cooking, dunks, blocks. Lively dunks, blocks, better playmakers. When they come off the screen and they're at the free throw line or they get a, the ball in a bad position, they're able to make the right decision. They're better playmakers than Gobert. And that's something that Gobert really needs to improve in this offseason. He has to work on some type of offensive game or being a better help side defender in the postseason or just locking in on defense in the postseason. Not trying to knock him as not being a good defender because he was a good defender against the Nuggets, but not a good defender against this Mavericks team. And those two bigs were able to eat. Okay, that's enough on Gobert. And I was about to talk about him anyway. Cat had to post up more. He didn't post up enough. Derek Jones Jr., who's 6'6", guarding him. Post up, Cat. Why are you taking a 100,000 billion gazillion threes every single night instead of posting up Derrick Jones Jr. Anthony Edwards, the guy who we all bestowed on him, the title MJ, the next MJ, okay? He's the MJ guy. And no, he's not really the MJ guy here. He is not Michael Jordan. I repeat, Anthony Edwards is not Michael Jordan. It's unfair to compare a 22-year-old Anthony Edwards to a 28-year-old Michael Jordan. Because when we think of Michael Jordan, we think of 94 or 90, 95. We think of not 94. We think of 96, 91, 88, 89. We think about Michael Jordan when he's in his prime. He's winning championships. I don't think Anthony Edwards of that, as that type of guy. It still was impressive at 22 years old to get past the defending champion champions and to win in a way where you wasn't going on offense but you provided a spark on defense and got your team 
passed that game seven and was able to make the Western Conference Finals at the age of 22. That's great leadership. That was something nice to watch. Man, Anthony Edwards has to become a better playmaker and stop making so many jump passes here and there. Jump pass there, jump pass there. It's something that he really needs to fix this off season and they have to replace their point guard Michael Conley with maybe a younger point guard but this Dallas Mavericks team was able to get past the Timberwolves team that had the Nuggets rattled Nikhil Alexander Walker Naj Reed and Anthony Edwards Jaden McDaniels just playing great defense on that Nuggets team and just playing out of their minds they weren't able to keep that up against this Dallas team. This Dallas team had too many weapons. And Dallas answered every question I had last year. Last year, I didn't blame Kyrie for them not making the playoffs. I didn't say it was Kyrie's fault. I made a video about Luka being upset, not being happy. He's it's not funny. He's not happy. Jalen Brunson is gone. All this. They, they just look horrible. They were in good shape before Kyrie arrived. They traded all their defenders away. You have no defenders now. And I always complain about Jason Kidd not playing JaVale McGee going small. You need big bodies out there. So you know what they did? They got wing defenders. Derrick Jones Jr. PJ Washington, who's a great wing defender. We saw him stay down on Shea on every single pump fake Shea was doing in the second round. Derrick Jones Jr. played good defense on Paul George. Um, even Kawhi when they when Kawhi was playing, James Harden, PJ Washington did as well, and they played good defense on Anthony Edwards. So they got more wings who can defend, and they got bigs who can defend and who can play big in the paint. Derek Lively, Gafford. So they answered my question. That was my question. And the last question I had was when will Kyrie and Luca figure these things out and not play? hopscotch with the ball and then of course they figured that out early this season and we saw a little glimpse of that last season but now they just mesh well together Kyrie knows when Luka needs to take a shot Luka knows when Kyrie needs to take a shot and Kyrie has uh, this awareness of knowing when to take over a game when to not take over a game so this Dallas Mavericks team is an exciting team to watch in that second round I mean the Eastern Conference Finals not the second round I'm still stuck on the second round the second round has been the most exciting round this playoff run but the western conference finals has come to a close we have dallas versus boston let me know who you guys have winning in the nba finals until next time peace